Okay, hello and welcome. We are live with Soul Mirrors and I am Jess Gentinen, your host tonight. And we're hoping the stream evens out a little because everything was working perfectly, of course, when we tested this earlier and now we're having a little lag, but I'm trusting you can hear me okay and that we are broadcasting now. And tonight is a very special night because we have a beautiful evening planned talking about all about the 5G energies and how we can protect ourselves, what we can do in order to bolster ourselves, know what's happening, know what's coming. And it is an awesome time on the planet. Right now we have the new moon coming in next week, everything being illuminated and it is a amazing time to really sit, focus, be with our community and connect in this shared amazing space. So tonight is awesome because this is my first night bringing in a guest. Kira Ra and Sri Ramka are on their way to India right now, somewhere in Amsterdam, staying the night and they are sending us so much love and holding us and we are the bridge. We are the bridge here well, they are there holding all of this space. So I got the honor of having a co-host to bring on and who better to bring on tonight is Christina Job. She is an amazing powerhouse. She is the maker behind the 5G clothing and the Aura Energy Shield line. She is doing all kinds of amazing things. And she is also an extremely gifted healer and beautiful, powerful woman in her own right. I'm going to bring her in now and we'll say hello. Namaste. Namaste, <laughs> love. It's oh, so my goodness. To be here with you. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. It's so beautiful. You look so good. Thank you. You look amazing. You look amazing. And look at you with your scarf. I knew I was going to rock my scarf tonight and I didn't get it out in time. Well, so, I saw that you didn't have yours on, so I decided to wear mine. I am so glad you grabbed yours because <laughs> the last moment I forgot that. Your stream looks great. So I don't okay. know what on earth happened to my internet. Are you hearing me fine? Yes, yes, I'm hearing you perfectly fine. There's a little bit of breakup. Okay. I'm just going to have to like go with this because this is very interesting energies right now. We're coming right off the tail end of that Mercury retrograde. But so funny, right? I'm testing everything all afternoon here. It's all working fine. My internet's smooth. And then right before the show, this is what happens with these kinds of energies, right? Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> So how has your last week been? I want to know how your week has been. Oh, well, it's been amazing. I've got to say, I just keep leaning into the trust of just having trust for the divine process as it unfolds. I was feeling very behind on the orders because w as soon as we get these in, they are the 5G shielding fabric is being added to them and then they're being shipped out as fast as they can. Um, and I thought, oh my goodness, I was going to have everything out by Monday and um, that didn't happen. But the beauty of it is that we have these new logo labels that have just came from the printer. And so we're able to put those on the product and really show our brand and show the beauty of the symbology of our logo or energy shield. So my week has been leaning into the trust of the entire process. <laughs> oh, that is so amazing. I just love, I think there could be no one more perfect than you to be having this in your hands at this time. I can't imagine anywhere else that we would have been able to have this creation come to life. And it almost like did get stopped. And this all kind of started even mm -hmm. when we, Christina and I had the honor and joy of being together in Ecuador. Yes. Totally amazing. 
to share that time. That's where we met in person, but we definitely connected and I'm sure have known each other in other ways. And yeah. that was when it kind of began, right? That mm -hmm. this to your capable hands. How, how did, you know, how did that all go down? That was amazing. It was actually, I, I was planning on going to Tosa. Um, I had been last year, like a year ago in September, and I was planning on going next year in 2020. But there was those caves on the property, first of all, those were really calling to me. And I put it off and I put it off. And I kept feeling the, I mean, it was like such a strong magnetic pull to go there. And I was sitting there thinking, well, I could save the money, you know, I could just not go. But then I kept hearing that if not you, who, if not now, when go, 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 go. And so I was like, okay, I, the caves, I'm going for the caves. <laughs> oh my but gosh. yeah, and then I'm, I'm there. And the first thing that Shri said to me was, we need to talk with you. And you never, you never know like if anybody is paying attention to the messages and every single one of those emails, every single one of those messages is looked at, considered and, and held by both Shri and Kira and the entire team. And I knew that as soon as Kira said, I saw those uniforms that you were selling because I do uniform restoration sewing work. And it's, I kind of do that on the sly, like under the radar, it's kind of my work, my handiwork. And I just sow the seeds of light into every thread of garment and whatever I'm doing. So it was beautiful when um, they ended up saying the lady that was making it, she fell through and they needed these hat liners designed, fabricated. So they had all the fabric and nobody to do it. And here I've been sewing for many, many years since I was a little girl and it worked out perfectly. I was in the right time at the right place in the very right moment to do exactly the right thing. And I had the availability for it too. And the whole process since has been unfolding beautifully. Any sewing machine I need, it's come to me. Anybody to help me do this, that, and the other, it has come to me. They have come to me. Gifts upon gifts have been pouring out in the process of trusting and leaning into this. And so it was at an absolute yes. And I just kept saying yes. And Shri and Kira have been so beautiful with it. And their vision is clear. And I think that that also helps tremendously to have such a clear vision. And we're just going with it because it's necessary. This, this product is necessary. Absolutely. And I just wanted to hop in too, because while I was here, working all the controls, I wanted to make sure to give everybody the number to call in tonight because oh. we're still here doing into our own little intuitive reading sessions or if you have questions or comments or just, just want to share your experience of what you're going through right now, give us a call at 517-208-1500 and we will be taking some calls tonight and that is really fun. But yeah, I wanted to circle back around and hop back around to what you were just sharing because it's so amazing. And it's part of like what brought this show together tonight, uh, this whole 5G experience. And that's something that uh, Shrink here began sharing more with us while we were down there when they mm -hmm. started talking about the whole birth of this product line. And they've shared a few different shows over at Shri and Kira, um, official Shri and Kira, their Explore the Mysteries and they shared a lot of information and I think it's important for us to have that conversation a bit tonight about the 5G experience and, and what that's about and why do we want to wear this clothing that's not only beautiful, but it's going to protect us too. So I love this discussion because mm. there's a lot of fear around the 5G right now. So I want to definitely dive in and address that a little bit while we're talking that mm -hmm. there's a lot of people like really afraid and there are reasons why people are afraid um and the 5g right now is definitely 
affecting us all. You know, it's something that unless you're like living up on a mountain where you're not getting any, you know, Wi-Fi or any sort of, <laughs> but probably even still, everyone's getting affected to a degree. So what makes this Aura Shield, the Aura Energy Shield line so amazing? Like, what is it that helps protect us? Well, um, the waveforms, the radiation waveforms called electromagnetic frequency energy that we are normally bombarded with <clears throat> is typically a very large waveform. It's usually so large that it's taller than the human body. Um, I think the microwave or the millimeter wave technology has been a concern because um, the 5G is a, is a two millimeter, I believe, or, or kind of in that range, a very small wave. And so it doesn't carry over long distances. So there's a higher amplitude that's needed. And the concern is that, um, that these millimeter, these two millimeter waveforms, because they don't carry over a long distance and because they're so small and short, they kind of have to be placed in very close proximity, about one every three houses. So where we would see these big towers every few, I don't know, like maybe miles or something. Now with the, with the rollout of 5G, the concern is that they're gonna be so compact and they also don't go through matter like trees and stuff. So people are having to have their trees cut down, mature trees, just for this technology to be in place. Um, and so when it's coming at us, you know, being bombarded, it's not going around or, oh, you know, away from our body. It can actually go through the body because our cellular structure is primarily water. And I'm not a scientist, so I'm not going to say that, that I'm a scientist, but the beauty of uh, like a Faraday, this was originally developed as a Faraday fabric, um, a radiation shielding fabric by the military. And these used to have to be grounded and plugged in. So that would be like copper or anything that's more conductive. But here we've got a silver fabric. It's naturally um, antibacterial. But because of the weave of the fabric, it's, it's so much smaller than that two millimeters. So it offers a shield where any of those radiation waves are just going to bounce right off. And here we're concerned about these, um, these glands in here. So um, you've got the throat chakra. Well, I don't know if everybody knows this, but it is said that the endocrine system is the physical representation of the non-physical chakras. So the emanation of energy is overlaid with the different glands in the body. So I know this as a Reiki practitioner, as a healer, that um, this gland here at the throat chakra, which some people, I forget which one this one is. Do you remember what this one is? Um, it's not the pituitary, the pituitary is in the brain. Thyroid, this is the thyroid. So we're protecting the thyroid gland here. And then all of the, you know, different things going on here in the, in the throat, the neck. Then we've got the pineal gland. That's the third eye. But it's that actual gland, you know, it regulates all kinds of stuff like sleep, circadian rhythm, um, everything. I mean, pretty much everything. And then you've got your pituitary gland, which is linked to the crown chakra. So those are the three upper dimensional chakras that we're dealing with that that these two millimeter waveforms can really get at us. And when we've got our phone kind of up there, you know, then it's just adding to what's coming at us. So it's not that we're not strong enough, but this does help to take a load off of our system. Are you hearing me okay? I am hearing you fine. I'm like looking over at the chat and I'm looking at some things and people aren't hearing our show and I have us recording. So in the event that maybe it's not getting heard everywhere that okay. we can still broadcast it. Yeah. Okay. It's like 
your wealth of information on what is going on is outstanding. It is so amazing that like I'm getting this entire education right now that I didn't completely have before. So with like the scarves, because the scarves are going to protect that thyroid area, I imagine they wrap right around there. Yeah. Fabric. Yes. And they're so beautiful. You guys, when you touch that fabric and feel them, it's like, they are woven with love. They are cozy. They're all 100% like unique handmade. They take like a, a, how long do they take for those to be woven? Well, they take almost an entire day to weave it. And that's not the preparation. That's not including the preparation involved with actually dyeing. Okay, so this is the purple one. They, they don't always come in this pattern because each person that's weaving it, they have to hold it in their mind what pattern they want. And they basically just skip out certain parts of the yarn so that some of it is this kind of tan color. It's the natural fiber. And then some of it's this purple. And by the way, this purple is flowers that grow in the Andes mountains. It's so beautiful. So these are all just flowers. It's all natural. It's organic. It's supple and soft. It really just kind of moves. And then this blue, this indigo blue, um, that is beans they actually dye this with beans that grow in the andes mountains but anyway so it takes a lot of preparation just to get the yarn and the thread ready and then once that's ready then they weave it and it takes about a day for them to do that now this eye cat this is what we're used to seeing this is the original eye cat unesco certified intangible cultural heritage that comes there out of the Cunari people in Cuenca, Ecuador. So we're adding our shielding fabric to this beautiful, I mean, it already has such a high vibe. I mean, it feels so good already. And then you put this stuff on and you just feel like you're in like, you, you know how you feel when you go to a spa and you get in the warm spa table and they put the covers over you and it just kind of feels like a little heavy, but like comforting. That's how this feels. Oh, that is such a good way to put it. I love that. Oh my gosh. And then the hats that are coming have the little liner that's like, uh, (laughs) yes. Oh my goodness. Those Panama hats. And those are hand woven too, using like all indigenous like practices, materials, Mm-hmm. So gorgeous. Traditional, yeah. very traditional. Mm-hmm. These are so soft. I bought my partner, Ben, I bought him a hat in Ecuador like a year and a half ago, spent over $200 on it. And I was comparing it to this one. And this one is way better. It's the weave is finer, it's softer. And there's no sewn edge. And Kira made it a point to show me how beautiful this craftsmanship is. Because honestly, this is artisanal. It it is. And we're only charging $129 for this with the liner. So amazing. we've got the liner that goes inside the hat. But it's removable and reversible. That part really attracts me. Because, you know, it is snowing buckets outside right now. And... I won't be wearing a Panama hat in the snow. I want to put that liner into my uh, winter cap. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's why I was, I was thinking, well, you know, I could just, and you know, it's, it's pretty cute just on its own. Yeah. Stylish. Some people wear their beanies like this. Right. The the young kids are. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. So cool. (laughs) Totally. Oh my gosh. Christina and I have so much fun. She brings out my inner goof. I will <laughs> so appreciate it. And I know we are streaming at Facebook and people can watch us over there. I'm getting some feedback that it's working over there. Yeah. And um, but yeah, it's very fascinating because I don't have anything to do with where we're um like I'm just streaming it as I'm supposed to stream it, but for some reason it is 
it's just on Facebook right now. It's not working on YouTube or Oneness, but some people are joining us there. And I'm going to check the call board. And I have seen some people popping on there. Oh, that's fun. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to give that a second. So we'll keep talking while I'm pulling that up. This is just fascinating. And this is very good practice. Uh, I am so grateful that Christina is here with me right now, helping me hold this space. Oh, I'm so glad to be here with you, Jess. You're doing an amazing job. I mean, neither of us are Kira, but I think, you know, it's like we can uh, definitely hold space for Shri and Kira both while they're traveling and while they are. Oh, I loved what you said earlier about being the bridge. Oh, I would love to talk more about that because I've been having some bridge moments as well. And um, I, yeah, tell me. Well, so even just in the creation of these products, you know, I think that there is like a rainbow bridge. Eventually one day we will not need products like this. And that's the trust I'm holding in it is that this right now, this is for us now, but as our, as our energy amplifies, as our, um, as our bodies attune to the frequencies, the much higher frequencies, we won't need these tools anymore, but it's a bridge. And just like, you know, um, how energy bridges over space and time, this is helping us in the now. And that's what we need this, this type of thing now, but have you been having other bridge moments too? I believe so. It's been really coming through to me. And I think it's been like this last month, really, when November came in. And it's become kind of apparent to me that I bridge things in different ways. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about, um, you know, what uh, generation you are. And, you know, these are all just labels, you know, but that mm -hmm. I sit in this in-between stage, right? Between like, I think you and I probably sit there both. We can remember analog, but we also grew up completely like when digital took over and there's like that bridge. And I see how I bridge that with like a lot of the people I work with and what I do. And, but also seeing that bridge between the dimensions, like getting more like bigger picture and leaving planet Earth and being able to bridge the energies between um, the fifth dimension and seventh and anchor them here in the third. And I'm having, I don't know about you, but I'm sure you are having intense, wild experiences lately with that where it's just like, wow, if I didn't think miracles were real before, like there's no way to doubt it now. So things just happening. And that, yeah, we're all bridges in a way. And, and right now while Sri and Kira are traveling and they're in India, we're holding this amazing space, each of us in our own little corner or spot in the world. We're all like, we're all acting as this bridge for this energy that's coming through. Mm. Uh, it's super powerful. So yeah, there's some ways I'm experiencing it and it's been really profound. I mean, really a fun time. Mm. Mm. I completely relate. I, and I remember seeing your post on Facebook about Xennials. That's, <laughs> that's where we're at on Xennials. So kind of between Generation X yes. and Millennials. <laughs> yes, yes, but, we are like the in, the in between. <laughs> yeah. But I love that. I love how you described that bridging the fifth and seventh dimension and, um, and how it feels to, you know, it's almost like um, it's out there on a parachute and we're just kind of pulling, pulling the rope on the parachute and anchoring it in. But that it's like that rope is the bridge to us and, and the upper dimensional aspect of ourselves, I guess, um, as we pull it more into our heart space. So I've been experiencing that for sure. Oh my gosh. I want to hear what some other people are saying. I have the call board up and I'm going to test out, see if it's working. It looks like we have Monica on the line. So let's try to bring her in. Should we? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> okay. 
Monica, are you there? Oh, can we hear you, sweetheart? I see that you have called in and that you are there. Oh, I'm mute. Let's try again. Are you there, Monica? Can you hear me now? I hear you. Oh my gosh, you're there. Oh, okay. Why, why are you <laughs> there you are. Oh my goodness. So you can hear us fine on the call line right now. Hi, do you hear me, Monica? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Are you, be, are you able to listen to us on the phone line right now fine? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because we are definitely having some streaming issues in some other places. <laughs> So I'm letting people know in the chat yeah. they can call in to hear the show. So, oh my gosh, thank you so much for being here. How are you doing? Oh, you're welcome. Good. I just wanted to offer you all some love. Thank you. Aww. Keep going, keep going, keep going, right? Thank you. Yes, we have to keep going when that moment arrives and you don't. <laughs> know what is happening and you just have to keep taking the step that is real trust so we're going thank you thank you for being here and yes. your support it's true. It's hard to breathe, right? yes absolutely how is your experience been lately um have you been noticing the bridge experience or what's been going on for you oh i think so yeah and um Actually, I've been challenged with the breath, and I feel like the breath is that bridge to the heart, you know, to the new timeline. So I've been kind of challenged with the breath because it feels like when you when you jump off somewhere to go to the next place, you have to let go of the place where you came from. That makes sense logically, <laughs> but then the heart gets scared, and then you have to remember to breathe. So that's what's been happening to me as far as bridging and timeline. I just have to breathe. Oh, goodness. That is so perfect. Let's all yeah, just put our hands to our hearts right now and do that. Let's take a few beautiful conscious breaths, bridging that heart and feeling into that oh, beautiful heart space. And that is what it is like right now. Mm -hmm. Like As I'm connecting with you, I've been experiencing this. Many have been experiencing this. It's like there's that moment where the ego and the mind want to come forward and we do, we almost lose our breath for a moment, like, oh my goodness. And there's just this, um, it's almost like being bipolar sometimes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so what's coming to me is that, uh, um, and I think Shira really talked about this, what is the weekend on the radio show that she and she does, but they were talking about how we've already said yes and so we're now dealing with the fact that we said yes so it's bringing changes <laughs> absolutely that is like so cool that you bring that up because when we say yes then yeah we get served up some more and we don't always know exactly everything we said yes to uh, on a soul level maybe but the rest of us has to catch up <laughs> One hundred percent. Oh my gosh! Thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else you want to share tonight? Do you have anything you want to share, Christina? Or yeah, Christina, would you like to share anything? Yeah. Well, I pulled, um, you know, these cutie cards. So I pulled one while um, Monica was talking, and it's. Saint Germain. Awesome. Oh so it just makes me think about well, Saint Germain, it's the violet flame. <laughs> Transmutation. One hundred percent. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. And when we are going through a tra transition, like who better than to call in or call upon is is Saint Germain and that keeper of the violet flame and that he can carry such energy. And when we use our breath and send anything that we're uncomfortable with to that violet flame to be transmuted, so much uh, comfort and relaxation can come in. So that is really cool that you brought in the energy of Saint Germain, Monica. 
Of yeah. course. <laughs> Perfect. Dance party. <laughs> With St. Germain. <laughs> Thank you so much, Monica. We're so happy you're here. <laughs> Hugs. <laughs> Bye, love. Bye, Monica. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Oh, I'm so glad that Monica got in and got through. So I'm getting oh, reports yeah. that yes, we can be heard on the phone line. And the only way people are going to know that is maybe if they pop over to the chat and see that they can call in or they're catching us on Facebook. And Jerry, our producer, is saying that um, it'll be posted in the archives later tonight also wonderful so they will be able to catch up with us is being recorded so good very fascinating very fascinating <laughs> so i feel like this is like such a perfect moment for us to yeah all connect and be that bridge you know we did a few of those heart-centered breaths but in this time right now where there's so much energy available to pull us away from the truth of who we are it's like there is that constant Velcro of density, as Sheree says, it's like the Velcro that so easily can pull us. <laughs> and as we walk around in the world and there's 5G and there's other energies that are, it's like a little abrasive. So we really do need to at this time, really, I think it's a call to step it up. And how Monica's saying, when you say yes, like, you know, you have to adjust to what's coming, but there, we said yes to a lot of big things coming to this planet, being here at this moment. And I feel like that's what I'm noticing with people I'm working with, what's going on, the people I tap in with that are tapped in is that self-care and really doing a lot of that kind of meditative time, taking time for breath, taking time to connect, having little reminders, you know, refresh, freshen up your altar, freshen up your space, bring in things that you love because it's really easy to lose track of, of our connection and that multidimensional being if we're not tapping in frequently and often. It's not like a, just a thing that I can do at the end of my day or something. It's like got to be incorporated into my day all the time. What do mm -hmm. you think about that? Yes. I mean, I think the experience of saying yes is constantly saying yes to um, being mindful and to holding space for yourself and others to say yes to um, things flowing, not how we want them to flow, but how they are flowing. And, and sometimes how we want things to flow is not really the timing doesn't work out or, you know, it's like getting stopped at a stoplight when you're driving somewhere and you and hit one red light after another. We just don't know what it's keeping us from, but we can trust that it's, it's going to deliver us to where we need to go safely and in the perfect timing. And I find that saying yes, like what Monica was saying, saying yes constantly is is literally the way it's like one of the little keys that unlocks the mastery of, of, of self, the self ascension mastery, because we're not going to be perfect in every moment. But as soon as we realize that there's something we can change, it's, hmm, yes, I'm going to say yes to that self care. I'm going to be okay um, with just sitting back and, and maybe not doing something. Or um, if we see something and we take action and we say yes, sometimes it's just simply saying yes to taking that breath. Oh my gosh, yes. Just saying yes to the breath. I, that's wise right there. <laughs> um, and I see another caller on here. And what do you think? Should we bring them in? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I think so. It looks like we're 
going to ooh, British Columbia, Canada, ooh. my neighbor. Hello, Westminster. Wow. Hello, is anybody there? Hmm. Hmm. Try again. Anybody there in British Columbia? We cannot hear you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try this one. Let's try California. Hello, is this Susie in California? Okay, is this Susie? Are you there? Yes, I am. There we are. Hello. <laughs> I am so glad you did call in because we are having interesting technology snap foos and calling in is working to listen. But yeah, now you're here hanging out with us also. <laughs> it's hard to hear you very well. Okay. Speaking to Christine. Christina. This is Christina. This is Jessica right now, and Christina is here as well. Okay. Hello, hello. Mm -hmm. oh, amazing. Well, we have been sharing some things, and if you missed out on the first part of the show, you will be able to go I back. And, got, you just got through. Uh, okay. Well, you're here, and we can definitely still share some more because, yes, Christina is the maker behind the 5G line Aura Energy Shield with Sri and Kira. So when is that, um, is the website up yet, Christina, for that? Well, the website is up, but it the store is not up and running. So people are still making their purchases through malasforascension.com. And um, yes. then I think we're going to have the shop up and running by December 1st. That's the aim. Um, if you go to AuraEnergyShield.com right now, you'll see it looks kind of like you can shop, but it's being worked on. So we're trusting it will be rolled out for December 1st and everybody can make their purchases there. But yeah, malasforascension.com in the meantime. And you can get these makanas. I believe they're on sale. Oh, makana is another word for scarf. Yes, we are here, honey. She can't hear you very well, Christina, unfortunately. Oh, bummer. Um, but Christina is sharing and you, you will be able to listen to this on a replay to Susie and she was just sharing about the website and where you'll be able to go to get the scarves and the hats and there's been yeah a lot of wealth of information shared in the first half of the show so definitely check the replay later it should be posted at oneness talk radio um, and also over at the facebook oneness talk radio and in the archives for soul mirrors if you go on oneness talk radio and go to the soul mirrors it'll be in the archives there as well oh, okay. yes is there anything we can help you with tonight other than than uh, calling in and connecting Yeah. Whatever you think. Whatever yeah. You feel, be totally. A hundred percent. So just, yeah. Connecting oh, with okay. you and inviting you right now. I'm just feeling you just needing to take that breath. We've been talking about breath a lot tonight and just taking a hand to heart and taking a beautiful breath and really calling in and anchoring this energy of trust. It's like, I do, I feel like everything has been today for me gold energy and i feel that gold energy that is just emanating around you that there's definitely a lot of protection and that you are not alone and that you don't have to go through it alone sometimes we have to remember to talk to um our guides and angels and they're definitely like what i'm picking up on saying you know spend some time writing and sharing 
and sharing your concerns or worries. Maybe it's in a journal and really spending time connecting with your guides and saying, okay, how can I get some extra support and help? Show me, show me what I need. And there's definitely a feeling of just really needing to get into a space of trust, deep, deep trust with yourself and the universe and partnering up in a way that starts to get you into the space of empowerment versus giving your power away. Like, oh, now, like all of these things are happening, but I have my power in the center of it. So things that help you really connect to that hand to heart, spending time, you know, outside in nature, getting your journal out, connecting with your guides. They're saying like, connect, 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 and really drinking the water and all of that kind of stuff while you're navigating this is that's a lot of what I'm picking up on right now. What about you, Christina? Well, she's in the sunshine state, right? California. So I'm, I'm getting a lot of that, you know, just heart open standing in the sunshine and breathing in that plasma golden light. Yeah, she's sharing with you that you're out in the sunshine, feeling the golden plasmic light and just really connecting with that light, Susie. Yeah, just be outside and connect with the light. All of your messages are really about connecting and connecting and really being with yourself. So we're so, so glad you called in and you can stay out and hang on the line and, and listen to the rest of the show and see what you pick up and come back and check in with the archives later. Okay, honey. Okay. Thank you so much. Lots of love and blessings. Thank you. Love you. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Well, I've got to say that the, even just the idea of connecting is yet another way to say bridge or bridge can be said as connecting. So when our caller was on just now, and I didn't catch her name, so I'm sorry that I don't remember her name, but um, Susie. Susie, yeah, okay. Well, um, she really she really brought in that sunshine and I pulled another card while she was on the phone and it's once again, Violet Ray. And so we had St. Germain and Violet Ray. Well, um, wow. wow. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of transmutation happening. That's amazing. That is truly amazing. And I think it's a theme for everybody tonight as we're here connecting in this space that there's this violet energy that's coming in for transmutation for us all. And it is fascinating because I am seeing that theme popping up everywhere. It's really a powerful time for us to release the old patterns like this is a big time. And I know we wanted to, I think it's like a good segue into some of the magic and miracles that happened while we were in Ecuador that were just <gasps> so beyond transformational, so amazing. And I think it would be cool for us to have a little conversation about what was happening there. Yes, please. <laughs> that was so amazing. Wasn't it? Well, yeah, I had been there a year before. And so I was there in September 2018. And then I was there in September 2019, when we were all there gathered together. And the the group that we were with, I personally think was super special, super like our alchemy, we were like alchemically combined through spiritual processes that amplified the beautiful work that we did just being present at Ingapurka, present in the caves. Um, I mean, geez, there was so much that we did the Mayan ceremony, the museum walk. And every single time we went through 
I mean, my goodness, we were only there for a week and it felt like we were there for like two months. It was like that. Every day was like, wow, have we only been here like two days or three days? So much has happened. And then all of a sudden it was done and I was like, wow, how am I going to go back to real life? But it was (laughs) absolutely insane. I mean, if any of you have been thinking about taking a trip there, book the flight. It's nothing short of miraculous. Uh, And yeah, while we were there, it was such a profound time because right now we know that the divine feminine is rising. This particular time is just very about that divine feminine energy coming forward on the planet, irrespective of gender, right? But just that energy. And we really, that equinox really kicked off this rise, right? Oh my goodness. And we were at Inga Perka. And if you all don't know what Inga Perka is, it's like the Machu Picchu of Ecuador, but it is so much cooler because it's not as, um, well known it's still very like we we drove in the back way right and it was just you're just driving through all of these little villages and way up in the mountains and there's nothing you know but just how people have been living for a long time there's you don't see blemishes of you know western modern buildings or brands or things it's just really chill and we were almost pretty much alone that whole time we were at the site and we're there on the equinox and I turned 40 that day, which was insanely amazing. Yeah. Uh, I know. And then you think <laughs> about the four and the balance and the, the equinox being about balance. So it was a huge activator for all of us. We were all activated and it was really like the capstone on five days of journeys, like being with those sacred artifacts that I believe you all will get to hear more of the stories about because those were very important. They hold keys in our history to our humanity and they're very um, profoundly the energy in there and connecting with them. I mean, I don't always connect that radically, but in that space, it was beyond belief. Um, and just, yeah, just to be there in the, the portals of energy everywhere we touched and all of the ceremonies and being together in the Temescal and doing ceremony, mm. just amazing. Oh my goodness. And those caves. So yeah. What did you feel about the caves? Those were kind of what called you there. Well, my experience was very profound. I mean, <laughs> I don't think I can walk one square inch of that land without feeling like just immense support but as we were okay because we were um, guided to be very mindful of our walk on the way up to the top and so there were like several layers and I had this moment where I almost like pulled away from my body and I was witnessing my physical body walking up towards the giant mama eucalyptus tree that's up there just before you make the bend over to the caves. And as I pulled back from there and I was just observing kind of a bigger picture of it, it felt and looked and almost hearkened that energy of the King's chamber where it kind of like, I don't know, have you ever seen those diagrams where the King's chamber, it goes up like this and then it kind of goes like this. Yes. And that's how it felt. Cause you know, when you go to the caves, you, you go up to the left and then you go over to the right and there's those two caves. Absolutely. Wow. That is so amazing. And you brought me back to that moment. When you walk up this path, guys, there is a fifth dimensional experience and there's like a landing pad there and you can feel the compassion, right? Fifth dimension Remember, everybody is all about the compassion and seeing with those eyes, your life, this planet, all the, all the beings and just feeling that compassion and that, um, ensoulment that came through of the divine directors came through when we were there too. the, the one that's being shared that's on Sri and Kara's homepage. And that line just always gets me, you know, imagine seeing everybody in their highest 
form in their highest expression for this lifetime. And that fifth dimensional experience as you're walking up those paths to the caves and you're really anchoring in that compassion. And then you continue up the path and then you hit the seventh dimension and you hang out there. And that's just that very pure, clear, like the release of all judgment, just really in a wit, really truly that witness, you know, witnessing, witnessing. And then, yeah, like you said, going up to that mother eucalyptus tree and then you're in the ninth and yeah, you kind of just cross over <sighs> and go into that first cave. And there's the, that was the clarity cave. And when you sit in there, you are cradled by the mountain, Tosa Blue Mountain. They have had archeologists all over it. It is a major sacred site. It was used by the Kenyari a long time ago. And you feel the energy when you're in that mountain. It was, and then you go to the next cave and you sit there and it's the creation. And we had this beautiful initiation as we started. And it was like, it set the tone, I think, for our whole experience and the group that was there. It was a powerful group of beings. And look at what's being birthed from it. We have our beautiful 5G maker here that is bringing <laughs> it to life. Yes. Oh my God. And it is. It's like, what a perfect time for this to be coming forward. And I'm looking forward to even what else is going to come because I'm like, I want like a whole robe. I want, <laughs> I want a dress. I want things with mm. this amazing fabric. So I lost the end part there, but I will say that there is more coming and um, these two items are just the beginning. We've got the hat liner, we've got the Makana lined in the 5G fabric, but next, um, and actually it was really cute, Shri and Kira sent me a picture of them themselves wearing, um, Shri totally sent me a selfie. I was like, oh, Shri sent me a selfie. <laughs> But um, he totally had on the larger version of this. So we're going to be rolling out a much wider, larger, longer one. It can be wrapped around. It can be worn as a maternity wrap. It can even be like a little blanket. And if you're like me, when you travel, you want to be in your energetic cocoon, your bubble. You don't want any Klingons getting on you in the airport. And so it's like you just kind of shield up and and put, you know, there's a lot of Wi-Fi and a lot of radiation, just that alone, not to mention who knows what else in the airport. So it's just, yeah. you know, um, there's that coming out. And then I think we're eventually going to do pajamas or undershirts or, you know, we just have to make sure that it's the right feel because we're all kind of tactile people. And if it doesn't feel right, we just don't want that on our skin, you know? Right. We want it to feel, we want to feel the love and the creation because the whole product from beginning to end is created very purposefully and mindfully and with great presence. And like, even without the 5G fabric, these products are offering protection. I feel like just because of the love that's woven in. So yeah, yeah. everything that's going to be coming through is going to be a high quality. And I'm looking Looking over here, and I think we have time to bring in another caller. Um, what do you think? Let's try it. Yes, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Looks like we have Dennis in Atlantic City. Nice. Hi, Dennis. Are you there? Oh, I'm having errors with the network, of course. Sorry, Dennis. Okay. Aww. We'll see if it will pop back in so I can try that again. This is a fascinating evening and a fascinating journey that is going on. And it's an act of real trust live and in person. I appreciate everybody that has stayed with us this evening or that is tuning in on the replay because this is like kind of an example of what's going on right now uh, in, in like everybody's personal experience, I think, and on the planet is that you can have everything set up and think you are in control. And then 
you know, we're not, right? Nothing, we're never really in control of any of the outside circumstances. We can only really control how we respond. But it's hilarious because we can think we have everything sorted out and know what we're doing. And then all of a sudden you have a huge hiccup and you're asked to really step into trust and keep going anyways. And I just, I am totally laughing like this is totally perfect in every way you have to trust it and and keep on walking and i know you've had your trust moments you know this is soul mirrors and when anyone is here sharing there's something that everyone feels and connects with so yeah Mm. do you have any uh wisdom on your path as you've had to really step into trust because to get here and be the maker you had to definitely go through some steps before this all could happen and before you got to Ecuador and before all that opened up, you know, what's that been like for you? It's been an amazing journey. I was working in the corporate world in, um, uh, by July, 2018, I quit my job after 13 years and I leaned fully into doing my, um, service to others work, my Reiki practice hypnosis, um, BQH hypnosis, and um, just trusting that, that everything would come as it needed to. Earlier this year, though, I had opportunities to do some sewing work. And I was like, well, wait a minute, I'm, I'm building a business here doing Reiki and healing and, and BQH hypnosis. Why all of a sudden is this sewing work coming up. And I thought, well, maybe it's a distraction. And I really meditated on that. And I, and I asked the question, you know, is it a distraction? Is it a plan B trying to sneak in and derail me or take me off of my purpose or prevent me from bringing healing energies to people? And what I discovered was no, that it was actually part of the plan. And honestly, I will tell you, I was doing uniforms and restoring uniforms, but I wasn't doing any major tailoring or anything like that, even though I knew how to do it. Um, And one of the jobs that had come my way was the tailoring work to do with a local tailor. And he does some fancy suits and, um, and it kind of got me back into clothing, which I had. Amazing. Oh my gosh. And I'm really like, sorry, but we have to. Start it's already time. On our show. But that is so amazing to go through all of that, like having the most like professional density, professional success all lined up and to come into this tailoring magic and really trusting it and Reiki and everything that you've opened up to. What a gift you're offering the whole planet by being here, creating these products for us and bringing them to us and all your other spectacular gifts. So if you guys want to catch up with her, Christina Job, where's your uh, website too? Where, where can people find you? Yep. They can find me on cosmic moon dot me, not com. Um, it's cosmic moon dot me. And um, that's where all my stuff is. And then if you want the aura energy shield, it's AuraEnergyShield.com, but right now purchases are being made at MalasForAscension.com while we're building up that website. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for just spending this time and being here and rocking it with me no matter what yeah. in your way. Oh, <laughs> we're rock stars like that. Oh my yeah, God. we are. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Thank I love you. Jeff. you. And until we're together again, and for everyone else, we are sending love and blessings. Namaste. (laughs) Namaste.